Hey guys, welcome to Cricket Fanatics Magazine. I'm your host Khalid Maidin and this is the review show. So this is all what we're going to talk about today is obviously the test match between Pakistan and South Africa. The defeat, massive defeat, I feel, the dominating defeat, seven wicket um, win for Pakistan. The protest struggled, I feel, throughout this match to obviously get to a standard I think that they would have been happy with. We had Quentin the Cox press conference a little um earlier in the day so our detail is going to be joining the stream a little later to give his thoughts on on the press conference i'll also play you one two clips actually that's what i could really take out of the press conference that was worthwhile for me to share with you guys <laughs> so um, i'll play you two short clips from quentin's press as well so that you guys can get a thought process of how that went but before we get going you know what you guys have to do you have to subscribe to this channel please click that notification bell for all future videos um you know all your support is really welcomed we put the the live chat obviously um is is live at the moment the live chat is on so put on the super chat if you click on the right bottom right of the of the live chat there's a dollar sign to make sure that we read out your comments because this this comment this panel is full tonight uh, i mean to this afternoon sorry this night in Pakistan, or oh, I couldn't even recover from that one. <laughs> but uh, yes, yeah, so this, this chat is going to be full today. The panel is going to be full today. So please get your comments highlighted so that we can read it out on the channel. So without further ado, let's get into the chan the panel and let me introduce you to all my guests. So it's Cricket Connoisseur as per usual. We've got Ravi Reddy as well. We've got Unpo. And we've got a new debutant on the show. Seppo, welcome to the show, brother. <laughs> Ready to <go> <laughs> <laughs> uh, Welcome to be with you guys. Eh? No, long time listener, first time caller. It's good to be on the panel. Awesome, man. So I'm really excited about this. Um, to get this conversation going, to talk about this, obviously, I'm sitting here making a lot of mistakes because I'm a little bit upset about how everything went. Uh, I knew it's coming for a couple of days, maybe. Um, I think after the first innings, I already thought so it coming. <laughs> but uh, for me to get the, if I'm going to be on, completely honest, but let's talk about it. I want to start with, let's talk about this entire series, where it went wrong for the Proteus. Now, I'm going to give a lot of plaudits, obviously, to Pakistan for the way they played. They played excellently. We can't take that away from them. Um, we, we have to say they batted beautifully. They bowled really well as well. The way they utilized their spinners was excellent, I feel, especially towards the the end of the series um at the end of the year when we really needed to put on partnerships they they broke those partnerships so all of those things are all important when it comes to um playing uh as best as possible i'm gonna ask everybody just to mute your mics please while we are working and then you can just put on your mic again when you um when you talk when you're about to talk because there's going to be quite a few people that are going to come on the show to the guys in the panel before we get go um, i'm sorry in the live chat the guys in the live chat please you can call into the show if you want to give your thoughts. There is a link in the description for you to join in. So call in on the show and give your thoughts. Um, and we'll get into this conversation. Now, if you guys are patrons as well, you can get involved with the Patreon. There's a link in the description. So I'm going to go around the screen. Or sh let's not go around the screen. Let's have an open discussion for a change. Um, let's just get, have a go and uh, talk about this. I'm going to get it going and you guys can butt in when you when you want to. I just think that from the Proteus' perspective, there was a lot of loose shots. Um, the way they lost some of their wickets, I feel that they could have been a little bit tighter and a bit, of, a little bit closer with their, or more um, accurate with their game plans. Um, yes, we had some guys like Quinny that were off form, not performing well. He lost his wicket poorly. He said that in his press conference as well. He, he hinted towards it. He didn't really want to come out and say, oh, no, this is, this is the reasons why we collapse or whatever the case may be. Um, those things happen, but uh, generally speaking, I feel that we can tighten up our batting. Um, we have a problem, yes, in the subcontinent, but there were improvements, I feel. In this particular test, there was some improvements with regards to how we faced the spin, especially in our second innings. I think that's where it really um, proved, especially from Aiden Mark and guys that have struggled in the past. But what are you guys' thoughts? Um, where did it go all wrong for South Africa? Let's just have an open discussion, and I'm going to bring it into the stream as well right now. Khalid, you can't win a test going 220 and 245. I'm sorry, that's 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 not that that's that's fundamentally something. And yes, there were improvements, but you can see that this team lacks some sort of a plan against spin. 
Quinny this morning going hard at a ball when it there wasn't need because he's playing out of the rough. Because uh, bowling into the rough, that no, that shouldn't have happened. Um, I think the problem I have with I have with this batting lineup is someday the middle order will fire, someday the top order will fire, but they'll never fire mm. together. They they don't work. It's like it's like it's six individual batsmen playing for their own careers rather than playing for the cause of the team. Um, it that's what it feels like. You know, they they there were moments in this test where you kind of felt like, okay, guys the the energy's down the 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 way in which we we start um sessions is or is is down and it's like just individuals out there there was no it's it doesn't feel like there's a team environment it doesn't feel like there's they're all there doing a collective job it's just you do we it's like we arrive and we're here to win a test match and we're 11 talented players but at the end of the day it, it just feels to me like that's missing and and yes the, the it was always going to be a trial by spin but and they've improved, but there's certain things that 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 people need to be able to read situations, read the game. And if veterans or if if seniors in the team like Quinton and and Faf and whoever it is are not following whatever game plan there is, I don't even know. The question we'd we'd have to ask is: Do they have a game plan against spin? Who's leading that game plan against spin inside the in the backroom staff? But it it feels to me that. It, it, this team's disjointed. I don't know where it's disjointed, but the sense of me and watching how they how they fielded, how they batted throughout this test, it it, it feels as though like guys are 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 are, are, are getting there. They're getting in. Then they they they're not necessarily understanding the context of the game and trying to drive the context of the game. The loose shots come out of the fact that um, you've missed the context of of of. You, you you don't understand where the game is headed, or you don't understand how you feel, how you want to win this game. It, you know, I I get the erase. It's easy to say yes, we have a deficit. Let's erase it. That's fine. But was there ever a discussion in the change room to say how are we going to go about giving them a score? Do we go back into our shell, or do we continue with the same game plan uh, Rassi and Aiden had before? Um, it felt as though there was something different. The moment we got over the, the, the it got, got into the lead, and everyone slightly felt a lot freer when we needed the same type of caution and circumspect to try and get us closer to where we needed to be. Mm -hmm. Guys, I'm going to get involved. I think I'm going to get involved by giving each person a chance because there's so many of us. I think if we open discuss now, we're going to go into. We're going to be talking to Kingdom Come. Let me just add another streamer to it. We've got Mr. Lubabalu. Cricket squad over here waiting for us as well. So this is going to be a lot of fun, especially with a rivalry between Lubabalo and um, Cricket Connoisseur Aaron over there in the top, <laughs> in the top corner. Okay, so Ravi, I'm going to I'm going to start with you. I'm going to give you an opportunity to just have your say, and then we're going to go in the order of the screen. So I'm going to just pull you guys all around, um, and then we can get to Aditya. And then when we get to Aditya, we're going to talk <laughs> about the press conference as well as play the clips. So let's go around. Um, Ravi, let's go with you first. 100%. So, uh, I fully agree with what impose uh, comments and statements. You can't win a test match uh, have posting 220 and 245. It's just not going to work. Uh, but I think the, the biggest scrutiny needs to be focused particularly on the first inning. South Africa, uh, while we complain about the inability to play spin or the ability to play spin or whatever the case may be, the truth is that at 220, there were two unnecessary runouts which took place. And we have to ask ourselves, if those runouts never happened, what, what, what could have possibly happened? Because Rassi was looking great. He was middling the ball. Temba was looking great. He was middling the ball. Uh, in my opinion, if they, if they didn't uh, make uh, any haphazard decisions, you possibly would have looked at another 60, possibly 80 runs. Who's to say? But the truth is, is that there's two unnecessary runouts on the first day of a test. I think actually cost them the entire match right there. Because um, the fact is, if they posted a score of 300 plus, we would have been in business. So that, obviously, Pakistan would have had a lead, but it wouldn't have been a significant one. And that's uh, ultimately where we lost the match right there and then. It was our batting. And um, effectively, uh, when we talk about people batting for themselves or batting for the average or batting as individuals, that also plays a significant role as well. Um, 
I think the successful teams at the moment in the ICC Test Championship are individuals which bat as a unit. Um, you know, Australia has that, England has that at the moment. The top six actually bats as a unit. There's a plan. Uh, there isn't like a statement on a whiteboard saying play aggressively. That could that's open to interpretation. That could mean a number of things. Um, play aggressively could actually be what Aidan Markham did yesterday, which is actually leave a couple balls. Um, you know, you don't necessarily have to go for every single thing. But the truth is that uh, I think there was a lot of unfair uh, criticism of uh, Markram and uh, Rossi yesterday as well, having lost their wickets towards the end of play. Fair enough, it sucks. It would be nice if they if they carried over to the next day. But the thing is, they did the job. They actually batted the entire day uh, for the country. And it's up to the remainder of the top six to play their roles as well. And unfortunately, they didn't do that today. Yeah, I couldn't agree more, Ravi. It's, um, what I really felt was that it was a tale of two different teams in terms of planning. Uh, the one team lacked leadership uh, completely. Um, Quinton de Kock, the way he went out, just it just left a foul taste in my mouth, I must say. Of all the ways to go out, why like that? After an unnecessary run out, if you're the captain, you know, do what captains do. You know, lead by example, fight it out. But he just got too stuck in his own ways. And I think there was a comment on commentary today. He just doesn't look like he he wants this captaincy, if if we're being very honest. I mean, some of the decision-making with the reviews, my brew, come on, man. <laughs> the, 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 the first one was a bit shaky. The second one, I don't blame him. But the third one in the first innings for Pakistan was absolutely shocking. And then in, in today's innings as well, I mean, just reviewing to review, like it's... Like it's a toy. It, it just looks like he doesn't want to be there. And and Umpo, Umpo hit the nail on the head by saying everyone looks like they're playing for themselves. And everyone looks like they're playing to survive. And uh, I feel like Quinton de Kock also feels attacked by journalists, just the way he's responding. And just the team atmosphere doesn't feel like like juniors are going to seniors and asking questions and seniors are saying, hey, just do this, man. Just stay chilled, stay focused, stay in the game. Uh, but with that said, it was fantastic to see Aiden Markram um, and and Rassi van Adissen get those runs. Um, I know Aiden Markram has been under a lot of pressure to get runs, especially in the subcontinent. So that was the type of fortitude that we wanted to see in a whole innings. And it's just a shame that no one picked up from that. And it was the lack of a plan was so clear. As soon as we got the lead, boom, 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 there was a collapse. And... Uh, Oh, man. And we could go on and on about saying, hey, Oaks, when was the last time we've been, when was, why do we always have the same conversation about spin? Why is it that South Africans still struggle against spin? Why is there no, why is there no plan? Temba Bavuma looked like he had a plan today, you know, knocking them around very smartly, getting down, getting low, paddling the shots, uh, paddling some balls. Why did we see no sweeps? It's just, this performance left too many questions unanswered. And uh, Ravi, you said it correctly. Uh, there's probably just like something like be aggressive on a whiteboard and, and people are interpreting it in different ways and there's no clear plan. And, and that's all that, that really hurts to watch, to be very honest. Yeah, I mean, we spoke about it. The smart aspect of it is just playing. Smart is just means play test cricket. That's all it means, actually. Uh, we're coming here with this aggressive style of cricket and with no plan it seems like at some points and i mean if aiden and, and, and rassi could do it and dean can do it then why can't the rest do it and that's my concern i mean i mean like the way faf went out for example i gave an example in the in the review after that uh, i feel that he should have learned from the way rassi and aiden played on that wicket i mean to you could see that you must go forward on that on that wicket keep your bat angle down so that the ball bats bounces down into the ground and not up into the air. This, this, this is loads of things, small little mistakes that we're making. Lubabalo, I hope your connection is holding up. I would like to hear your thoughts because um, I specifically asked you to come here for a reason because I know that you're going to be honest. Not that others are. Um, I hope it's going to hold up. <laughs> um, where do I start? Where do I start? I, 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 I don't know, man. I, I really don't know. But I'll probably be hated um, after this. Uh, I'll start and say Aiden Makram's innings, it was okay. Um, no, 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 don't do that. Um, Aiden Makram's innings, it was okay. But not for me, in terms of the context of the game, 
Um, we're batting third innings. We're batting. Uh, we're basically trying to set a total for Pakistan. Uh, blocking full tosses, long hops, not getting punished. Like, listen, I've I've said this for a number of times now. I've said against spin, if you really want to score runs. You don't want a spinner to settle, um, especially a leg spinner. If you're going to block 20 balls on the trot from a leg spinner, there's no way you're going to score him. Because now he's getting his lines, he's getting his length, he's getting his rhythm. He's going to get harder to, 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 to face. That's what happened to, to Thingy, to Faf. When Faf, Faf came on, Yasir Shah, was, his confidence was up. You could see he was in the both ways. For me, I think they need to decide how do you want to play spin and it's they either just want to defend and the only way they think is to score runs against spinners to score boundaries and it's true um tempo said it i i, I enjoyed watching um uh Tema Pavuma there he was trying you could see he was trying to score runs um he was sweeping and you, you could see See the sweep shots. He wasn't trying to play huge sweep. He was basically just trying to rotate strike. And I didn't see Makram and, and, and Rasi. Uh, yeah, they did well to try and bring us back in the game. But um, there's no guarantees. If you think you're going to face 200 balls and you think you're only going to start scoring runs after you've, you've faced 210 balls, it's going to happen that the 211th ball has your name on it. So that's why. That ball's need to have to hit boundaries. A long hop. At least get one. Toss. I watched Aiden Makram block a full toss and there was no one on the boundary. Everyone was in. You can't tell me you're afraid of going out. We need to get to a point where we we don't play cricket with that mindset of we don't want to lose. Um, I'm, I'm tired of being known as fighters. You can see now a lot of people are saying yeah, Aiden and Rassi fought. They fought well and then what happened? We lost. That's always the case with us. We're always fighting well. we always showing fight, but we never win. In India, a, um, Dean Elgar and uh, Quentin 100H, yeah. everyone was like, oh, at least we we, we lose 100. Yeah. It's not enough. It's not enough. We need to start winning matches. I don't care about fighting, whether Oaks want to fight hard and face 300 and balls and only score 80 runs. No, it, it needs to. we need to move away from being that no team that's known for, for fighting. Because I can tell you now, I could we hold of not um, being away services um, away, I think it was about four hours and nine years. If you look at how we played then, we we no longer have that team that could just close shop and play for a draw. The team we have now, we need to play based on the team that we have now. Um, Graham Smith had Jacques Calis, he had Hash, he had AB Oaks who could just close shop. They could close shop and say, well, we want to draw this match, so we're going to play for a draw. But I can tell you now, you're betting in the third innings, you're betting on day three, there's no way you're going to bet for a draw. You need to try and push for a score. But if Oaks are going to face 200 balls, only making 70 runs, you look at how forward batted. Forward didn't play. He rotated 200 balls. He still got to 100. So mm. as much as people are happy to see Aiden drafting hard, I still would have liked to see him rotate strong bit better. Not say boundaries. I don't want one fours. I don't want sixes. Just rotate strike a bit better. That's the only way you're going to play um, spin. That's something that um, Joe Root did very well against Sri Lanka. Now, now he was made big booming shots. He was just rotating strike, being busy on the crease. Don't allow spinners to come to you. Don't allow spinners to bowl at you freely. And then at the moment, we just want to block, 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 then go. We're not going to win matches playing like that. Now, thanks for that, Lou. That, that is excellent because that's a lot of the points that we all wanted to actually say. And we love the passion because that's what we need from fans. And guys, get involved in the Super Chat and, and let us know what you think so that I can show your comments on the on the stream as well. Okay, um, Aaron, from your point of view as an outsider to, to watch the way South Africa batted in this match, and I'm, and I'm emphasizing that because I think the bowlers, they actually showed their 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 fight i don't want to use the word fight all the time but they show their their fight to be able to try their best to 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 save the test match for us i mean they built excellently on the morning um 
uh, in their first at the beginning of Pakistan's first innings and, and to really fight back and do that. So um, I don't want to keep on using the, the word fight um, all the time, but uh, it's important that we do use it because, especially from the bowlers, when when we didn't put on that runs at the beginning, um, uh, I think everybody felt it in their hearts. We just all sank um, seeing that little runs on the board in a in a place where you knew because we won the toss. It's not like we were put mm -hmm. to bat. We won this toss. So we should have, and we were speaking up. Boucher was speaking about it. Kwani was speaking about it before the test, about how we have this plan to play against Pakistan in the conditions um, that we knew that this track was going to spin. Everybody knew that. It was crystal clear. When I spoke to Zainab Abbas, she told me when, I, when we had but when we had the um, the pre the press conferences before the time, we we knew that that's going to happen. To come out and play the way we did in that first innings just really disappointed me. Um, that we knew that we should have played the way we played in the second innings. Um, this is unfortunate that we keep on having to make mistakes to learn, mm -hmm. not learn by trying our best to play um, at at a certain level or at um, doing the certain things. So. From your perspective, cricket gonna see uh, Adam. Um, I love the background, by the way. Before oh, no, you say you. that, uh, uh, before I, you say that, I didn't give you um, credit for the, the the cool background. Um, <laughs> what are your What are your thoughts on this match? Well, before I I analyse South Africa, let's first of all give an immense amount of credit to Pakistan, and in particular the likes of Fawad Alam, as Luba Barlow correctly said, he showed everybody how to play on that surface. He dug in, he grafted away for that morning session on day two and was absolutely sensational. I loved watching him bat. I love Fawad Alam. He's an orthodox. He's gritty. He's resolute. He's a determined batsman. And as I said, it was just a bit of a masterclass on a pretty difficult surface in comparison to a lot of other batsmen. And then, of course, with the spinners, Yasser Shah turning into an almost prime Shane Warne on that surface. He was absolutely brilliant, getting lots of revs on the ball, lots of turn, being an absolute menace towards the likes of Faf Duplessis, for example. And then today, Norman Ali as well, 34-year-old on debut, had a fantastic Kaidez Arm trophy, took 61 wickets for Northerns, knows that surface like the back of his hand. Just brilliant. So first of all, immense credit to Pakistan. They thoroughly deserve to win that. I thought they were absolutely brilliant. Now, with regards to South Africa, I do think that that first innings was the killer because it's not just in Pakistan, but in India, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, wherever on the Asian continent you need first innings runs because the pitch deteriorates, it spins a lot more. And Karachi this year, I said it in the preview shows with regards to the spin, it deteriorates very, very quickly. The likes of a Sajid Khan who didn't play in this particular test match was racking up wickets for fun in the Kaidez Arm Trophy in Karachi. So I think that was the key. I think that was the first major body blow. Then in terms of the second one, something which we touched upon in the Sri Lanka series with regards to a Mr. Luto Sipomla with his ability to actually clean up the tail. I thought that that was a bit of an issue in Pakistan's first innings because you had a team here, 308 for eight. You have them on the ropes, basically, of course, you had that bit of misfortune with Kesha Maharaj overstepping. You could have had Hassan Ali out for about a couple of runs. And instead, those last two wickets, Hassan Ali got 21, Noman Ali got 24, Yasir Shah got 38 not out. I thought that was the real killer body blow. Instead of having a 100 deficit to chase down, you've got a 158. So that was another key thing. And then, of course, the one which we're all going to talk about, and I've no doubt that we'll go into even more depth about this, is the batting. It's a massive, massive collapse. 187 for four to 245 all out is disappointing. But with that being said, I do have a bit of a profound question. I've wanted to ask this, actually, not only in this test match, but beforehand. What do South Africans expect from this team? What are your expectations? I'd like to actually open this up to Harley yourself and, of course, the panel. What do you expect from this team? Because we're constantly told they're in a transition. We're constantly told, as Luba Barlow said, that they're fighting, they're gritty, they're warriors. But what do you guys, as South Africans, actually expect from this team? Do you expect them to be up there fighting with the likes of India, the likes of New Zealand, England? Do you expect them to be a bit of a mid-table challenger alongside the likes of a Pakistan, a Sri Lanka, for example? What do you guys actually expect? I'll just open that up to the panel, if I can, Harley. Yeah, okay, cool. So I'm going to start quickly. Um, I said this before, um, before the series started. Um, and actually, before we started playing test cricket, after the England series, I said, South Africa needs to decide where they're going to be going with a team. What is their mindset? How are they going to move forward? Are they going to be playing to win this test championship or to attempt to win this test championship? Or are they thinking for the next test championship? 
we need to remember that now test cricket is a championship. You're playing for a trophy. It's no more about just ranking first in, in the world and all of those things and, and playing a whole lot of series over a period of time. It's about playing over that two-year period, being the best that you can be in a two-year period. Now, if you're going to play for a trophy, it's about building a team and an ethos that you can take forward. Now, that's very important to me when I'm looking at a side. And I'm looking at this particular test. Now, I'm not saying that guys like Faf and guys like Algar and guy, all of those older guys that I speak about before, they are very important to the development of the team going forward. Yes. But my issue is about giving the old, like I always said, we should be prepping our team and building a squad that can survive the next two test championships. Build a core in a, in a, in a team that can really take us forward in the future. Now, younger players that we have tipped to be the next best things would be getting unbelievable experience on a trip like this to Pakistan and playing in the middle, not just sitting on the bench and carrying drinks. I feel that they need to play in the middle. A guy like a guy like um, um, Reinhard von Tonda would have learned way more than what Faf learned on this particular tour. Now you can bring Faf in the squad. I'm saying keep him in the squad. Does he need to play right now? You, I feel that you only play an experienced guy like him because he's going to win you something. It's the only time I feel that you're going to bring an experienced guy into a side is because you want to win with him. The reason we want to bring A.B. Uh, de Villiers back is because we want to win. That's all. The reason Manchester United brought Cavani at the age he is because we want to win games. That's why you bring experienced players. So, Ravi, you're laughing, but you're a United fan. You're supposed to back me here, brother. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> so, I, I don't feel like talking about Man United today. Maybe after the Arsenal game. Thanks for yeah. the three points, bro. No, no, we're coming for you on Sunday. <laughs> but the thought process behind people, any coach bringing in an experienced player, Jose Mourinho does it all the time with these teams. We see Pep Guardiola do the same thing. When you're buying experienced players, you're buying them because you want immediate results. If they're going to come out to the middle and go out cheaply, what do, do they learn from that experience? What does, what will a Reina van or Zubay Ramza learn from that experience? Or Matthew Bredsky or Grant Rulofsson or one of those guys? Or Eddie Moore can play for the next four or five years. Um, he's young enough to be able to pull, do that. I mean, it's just about building those partners in that cause for, for a couple of years and building a team that is strong enough. And I just thought that this is a, almost like a waste of a series, a wasted opportunity almost for, for younger guys to have get an opportunity. Keegan Peterson sitting in there in the wings waiting. I mean, was he not a, the right person to be able to get some experience now in this particular test and play? I mean, we need to really think about our core team and not just pick for matches to win matches at the moment. I feel they need to pick. If they want to decide on a philosophy, then pick to that philosophy. Pick players that can play that philosophy. Don't force players to play in a philosophy that they can't play. I mean, like, you, you're expecting to play a wing play, a wing playing football with Maguire on the wing. It's not going to work. Like, I mean, if you're going to, if you're going to, really want to play an attacking brand of football then you have i mean attacking brand of cricket then you have to think about playing people that have that natural ability in them that that natural mindset if you're looking for an anchor to obviously play at number six put a player in that can that has been doing it consistently at domestic level that's what i think that we should be doing over here and yes we want to win and i understand that south african public wants to win but you also need to look at the future and try to say, look, yeah, we could be winning consistently and dominating if we build the right team right now. We are in a transitional phase right now where, like people have been saying, we'll be trying to find a team, but we're not really building anything. We're testing, fails, we try, we, we replace. We test a new guy, he fails, we replace. It's like, how many people have gotten debuts in the last flipping four years? I mean, like in, in across, across cricket, I'm talking about this is all formats. Like, I mean, it's ridiculous now. It's getting a bit ridiculous. Um, does anybody else want to weigh in on that? I know people are going to want to debate me can on I, that. Can I jump in there? I knew um, it would be you. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, I was stuck with this this morning as, as to do we want to just throw all these guys in this? in this Because if you look at that top six, right? Um, Faf, is, 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 Faf and Dina are over, uh, over 30. You've got Aiden, you've got Rassi. Um, Aiden's younger than, than all the other guys, but you got Rusty, you got Timber in and around 30. Do you want to just you can build with these guys for the next two to to champion to to test uh, championships, or do you want to just go in and say, you know what, let's go for 25 year olds and let's play and 
and I feel you want to just go in with the with the youngsters and and give them the two the two um the the the, the two world test championships which is fine but the problem and 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 I'm and I'm with you there the issue is that we don't know what the plan is from the management we don't we know from yeah. from when he was asked this in the first press conference before the game and he said no we're out to win and that's that's what every coach exactly. should, should say I, I get it i get it but from from an understanding perspective from where we are from where the organization is as csa it would be the best time to rebuild it would i i don't want to i don't want to let faf retire without an adequate replacement if yeah, there is an adequate exactly. replacement yeah. faf's position is there because there is no faf is there because there probably is no adequate replacement but the, if you look in that top 6 the only person who you could drop and everyone's wanting to drop is possibly even is possibly Timber because everyone asking is so Dean's playing well Aiden is 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 being given a run and he deserves a slightly longer run in the side you've got uh Quinny there who's not going to be dropped because he's he's too senior um Rusty's now finally found some runs um so 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 Keegan might have to wait for his opportunity. So if I look at that 11 it's hard to bring in those guys because the age ranges do meet your criteria to say that we can go to the next to the next two world test championships with these guys. The 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 the, the issue is I think the management and the selectors are not willing to make the hard decisions. You're not winning, but you need to give people an opportunity. You have them around, but make the hard decisions. So if you want to go and I loved the Tabrez call before the test because it kind of felt as though they were being aggressive. So why don't you be ag- aggressive with, 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 with other selections? So make the controversial selection so we are okay with it. You know, it's five, ten minutes. It might be a test match. Everyone will vilify you. But if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But we are going around in circles. And we the, the fans believe we're in a rebuilding phase. I don't think they believe they're in a rebuilding phase. And that's mm. where I think the difference, that's where our disconnect comes in because we're trying to be aggressive, but we're being aggressive with guys who've never been aggressive before. They've been in the setup for the past six years and they've always played, they've been taught, well, the culture comes through throughout the years to play a brand of cricket that's quite cautious and everything else. And when you now start wanting guys to change that character, it it doesn't make sense, but from at the end of the day, at the end of the day, they need to tell us: Are we? Because because this loss is yes. If if it was the youngsters, it would be yes. We lost. They're inexperienced. They're learning. They're moving on. But with the guys that you have in their team, it's no longer excusable to say they they're learning. We're rebuilding because these guys have been there for five years and there is no change. So he has to stick with a set eleven, and it looks like this is a set eleven to carry on. I feel Mark wants to win some games so his coaching record doesn't get doesn't get decimated by traveling around the world with youngsters. So it, it's that it's that balance that he's trying to get, but there is no messaging coming from them to tell us what is what the plan is. Mm. They should have done this planning and it back when the original were appointed before the England saw I was speaking about it then. I'm, now it's a little bit like you, you have to commit. You've committed to that style. It's too late now to want to try and prepare now for 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 the next. Dish. I mean, you have a year. You have, you would have had a full year of actually practicing against the best players in the world. You would have had some. They would have experienced some of the best type of players in their positions in the world. I mean, guys bowling to Babara Azam would have been good experience. Okay, yes, our guys now. Our bowling attack is fine. I feel the the score group of guys, Lungi, Andrich, and KG, etc. They are they I feel they are a good core group that can learn. I think Andrich Nokia is is starting to learn. You can see there's certain things that he's starting to bring into his game a little bit. He's not nailing it on consistently enough yet. And the consistency in his game he needs to improve on and maybe learn some reverse swing and maybe some add some not hitting the deck so hard, maybe hitting uh, kissing the surface a little bit, but there's certain things in swing bowling that he needs to add to his game to be him to become a top, top, top um, cricketer. But we've got guys like Vian Mulder in the side that they're trying to breed in. I'm just I'm worried about the batters because that's where we failed over the last I mean three, four years is where we failed. We're trying to look for this next big thing and can't find it, and we've been struggling. I mean, we haven't replaced Ash, we haven't replaced Shark, we haven't replaced Herschel Gibbs, we haven't replaced Graham Smith. We haven't okay, maybe Graham. You can maybe say him and Alga are fulfilling a similar role. I think obviously Graham was a little bit more attacking than Alga, but fair, but but basically he is filling that role. We we haven't replaced um 
the likes of AB. I mean, there's so many players we haven't replaced yet. And batsmen are the type of people that need a longer extended run to, to get their flowing and their confidence up. I mean, you can see batsmen will go through a dip and then all of a sudden score a massive century. And then they'll go through a dip and then they'll score two centuries on the trot, two fifties on the trot. But before we get going, let me just, um, before we move on, I just want to get to Aditya quickly because we want to talk about the press conference. So before I get to Aditya, I want him, I want to just play the two clips from Quinny, um, what he said about batting collapses and what he said about batting in general. So this is what um, Quinny had to say. Yeah. Trust me, if I knew... I would let you know. And if we knew how to fix them, we wouldn't be doing it in the first place. Um, so, yeah, uh, we have spoken about it. We are trying to find a way how to, how to stop it. But fortunately, it's, you know, we're not, these collapses are not happening on purpose. Um, you know, so it's something we are trying to figure out ourselves. So, so yeah. But to be honest, I think the first innings, we actually gave them our wickets, to be honest. Um, so I think we'd be quite all right. Um, second innings, obviously, there was one or two good nuts, but, you know, that's part of the game. You're going to get one or two good nuts. Um, so I'm sure we, we're still fine. Um, just going to go back, uh, just prepare like we did, just to come back mentally stronger. Yeah, I think the, the concerns here, Aditya, is that the, sub, the we're not going to be able to see if the proteins have improved in Rawalpindi because necessarily because we might be completely different conditions there. Um, so it's not like we're going to see that we, we've we improved playing spin whatsoever um, in the next test. So what are your thoughts? What did you take out of the press conference? Well, one is that Quentin de Kock is not in a particularly chatty mood after a loss. And we've seen that after the England tour as well. Uh, so he wasn't here too, and he didn't have a, a whole lot to say. I think generally it was the obvious learnings about um, not having a significant enough first innings total, and then um, you know this the Pakistan is making better use of uh, spinning conditions. So that was essentially the theme of the game, really. And um, Quinton talked about it as well. Uh, but yeah, ultimately, I think. Uh, you know, he, he also said that they were trying to score in the first innings um, and then they tried to get stuck in in the second, which was the main difference. But I think every every tactical move that has been made by the South Africans through the course of this game has to be viewed with the perspective that there was still a day and a half left in this test match. And mm. winning the toss, they had the best of the batting conditions and offer. So somewhere i feel like before the game there, there was so much talk about you know run rate and you know having scoring options and things like that which which are all fine but i think too much of that played on the proteus's minds in the first innings and i don't think it's as much a technical flaw against spin or a technical flaw against pitches in asian conditions I, it's it's so much of a mental thing. And you can see that, like Luba Balo very rightly mentioned, that while Aiden and Rassi, Rassi made, you know, 70s and 60s, you know, you're blocking full tosses or you're blocking long hops. That, that tells you that, you know, they're being conservative, they're being watchful. So you're actually playing into the hands of the opposition. And it indicates a degree of insecurity within their own game. So it's these things are getting... To the proteas i think all the chatter on the outside is getting to them and uh, they need to find a way to block it out without really using that you know we're just gonna blast the opposition out of the game they're not going to be able to do that to Bala, i think that will tie into what you wanted to say earlier on if you're not lagging <laughs> Nah, all I wanted to say, um, <laughs> all I wanted to say is we, they need to start coming up with a plan. Um, because if you, when the squad was announced, we both said we want to see um what the plan is. At the moment, I'm struggling to see what plan is in terms of um the brand of cricket they want to play, 
in terms of how they really want to win games because the way we're playing, I don't feel like we're playing to win games, to be honest. Um, three days left in a match, betting in the third innings, after collapsing in the first innings, you have no reason whatsoever to just completely sh close shop. Because I felt like that that was what uh, Barassi and um, Aiden were doing. They decided to just close shop. Um, I, I really want to see the plan, but I, I think we, we, we they by making Quinton de Kock um, captain for this series as well. I felt he was already over being captain in the last series against Sri Lanka, even though we won the series, but you could see he was over it. Even now, there were times I could see, you could tell on the field that Quinton is just, He's done with him. And that could be probably one of the reasons why he score runs. Because you can like the kids, he's just not into it. Yeah, there's a word to describe uh Quinton the Cox captaincy, and it's it's basically hot for if you if you ask me. You can see it in his face, you can see it in his eyes. I said it before, the first comments I made, he doesn't want to be there. And, and another comment I want to make on, on Quinton de Kock as captain, I, I don't know why I did this to myself, but I watched the, the 2015 semi-final between uh, South Africa and New Zealand. I don't know. I just wanted to to make myself feel sad. I don't know. But yes, so I'm watching that game. Quinton de Kock went into bats with Hashim Amlan. If you go watch that game, gentlemen, you will see a Quinton de Kock that looks properly like a deer in headlights. When there was a mischance, this man, you could see his heart was physically in his throat. And uh, when, his when his wicket was taken uh, and he was walking off, you could see he was crying. And to be fair, to be fair, it was in Eden Gardens. He opened the batting. There's tons of pressure. But the fact is, Quinton de Kock under pressure is an emotional man. You can see it. Uh, and it doesn't look good. It, it doesn't really look good. So... I mean, this guy is captain. Ah, oh, come on, bro. If this guy is setting the tone, then then collapses are going to be everywhere. If if your your main guy, if the person that's like described as the future of South African cricket isn't keen to be there, why do we have him there? And another thing on that, when Hashim Amla was lacking form as test captain, we took away the captaincy. We gave it to Faf Duplessis just to you know ease the pressure. Quinton de Kock. In four innings, I think in six innings, he hasn't scored higher than 20 runs. When are we going to say, okay, all right, we want the old Quinton back. We want the Quinton that can score crazy amounts of runs at, at seven. We want that guy back, not this guy that just looks angry all the time, bro. I don't want this guy. Why Why do we move him up the order? Another thing, why isn't Bavuma above Quinton de Kock? He'd be much more of an anchor. Maybe, maybe I can see the arguments for trying to give Quinton de Kock a lot more partners um, down the order. But the 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 nature of his his game is just it's aggressive. So when there's less risk to take, he he flourishes. So it's I feel like we're playing him out of position here, and it's it hurts, man. It hurts to watch. Yeah, and you know, that's also taking a toll on Quinton tactically. For example, in and you know, generally for all the planning that you do pre-game, cricket a cricket captain has to think about the game on the field as well. And it was it was pretty evident that the Proteus fast bowlers were getting more punches out of the wicket. They were troubling the Pakistani batsmen more. But somewhere in all the conversation about spin before the game, I think it got to Quinton. So that second new ball, which was given to Keshav Maharaj, was wrong tactically. That should have been given to uh, to KG because he troubled Pakistani batsmen the most. Even at that time, I think he had two wickets in the wicket column. So I think that's a that's a tactical mistake that uh, that Quinton made. Secondly. After Rassi got out yesterday, I think there were about seven overs to go, eight overs to go in the game. Mm -hmm. It's it's no it's well known in cricket that the hardest place for a batsman to wait is the change room before he's out to bat. After Virendra Sehwag made 300 against South Africa in Chennai, Sachin Tendulkar had waited an entire day. He came out to bat. He made a duck. That's that's just that's just how cricket works, unfortunately. And I think sending. Instead of Kesha yeah. Maharaj, Nightwatchman was the wrong decision. 
It was wrong tactically. It's not like Faf is good enough to handle Yasser Shah. But at that point, I don't think it was the right move to make. And that to me has, has put uh, has put South Africa in a pretty bad position going into, into day four. I kind of feel like I'm not confident of knowing who's going to play and who's not going to play and who's going to do what and what's this. Like, I was saying it under Gibson when we started this whole attacking brand of cricket that we wanted to play. Initially, that was a Gibson thing. Otis Gibson came in here saying that he wants to play this attacking brand of cricket because obviously he got that. It was fed from England. I mean, he's, he, he, I mean that, that's probably where he learned it from. And we went out swinging. So then I was like, but why? So South Africans, naturally, because of our conditions and the pitches that we play on at franchise level, we naturally play an attacking brand of cricket automatically. So why not pick players that can play the natural games and put them in positions within the, in the lineup so that they can just play the natural games and that will help us play an attacking brand of cricket. Create partnerships within on the team, on the field. Like, for example, in the T20 game, where we're picking four anchors in the bloody team. All four, there's four anchors in that team. There's three guys that all guys are openers, all guys bat slowly, and you're picking them down. And one to four is all anchors. You have Quinton the Cock at the top of the order, yes. Then you got Temba, then you got uh, Rassi, and you got Riza, and then you've got Faf. They're all guys that take their time. I mean, build a unit, build a team that can complement each other, not just go out there and try. And, and hope you can't force a player like what what really peeved me off and pissed me off is when Boucher spoke in his press conference initially I think it was again in England when he was talking and Aditya we spoke about this where Boucher was saying that oh no we're going to tweak some guys uh, things and add some shots to the people's arsenals and stuff like that to help them play in this particular style of cricket and I'm looking at you know I'm looking at this and I'm like at this level or at, at, at ODI level or at T20 level, you want to tweak people's or add people things to people's arsenal now. I mean, like, no, you don't. You can maybe if it's a youngster, maybe if it's a youngster coming into the setup that hasn't played test cricket before, then yes, maybe. But are you going to now change a Faf or a Dean? Or a... Luckily, it's worked with Dean. I've, th I've seen an improvement in Dean's scoring since since this new brand of cricket has been implemented. But I think that is out of necessity because his partner was struggling. And I think that's why he, he, Dean himself is a stubborn guy and he knows his own game very, very well. So because Dean, and mentally, this is where I'm going to come in with Aditya's point on mentally, because the mental game in cricket is everything. It's how your mindset is that makes you play the way you play. Something that I've learned from a Calvarena interview is exactly that. Where he told me that when the pressure is on, Everybody and the wickets have fallen. Everybody expects you to fail. That's why I can go out and play my natural game because everybody expects me to fail anyway. So there's no pressure on me. That shows that there's a, a boy, there's a mentality in there that's saying, Look, yeah, I think about the game a little differently. Reinhard van Tonda, you're looking for tough players. Are you going to look for tough players just because of their strike? What are they going to look at the strike rate and say, Oh, no, this guy's a grinder? What about the mentality of pushing through a difficult situation? Look at a player's career. Look at how he's faced his career at the, at the professional level. Someone like Reynard Van Tondo who went out to bat when the, when the medical staff told him not to and advised him not to in the World Cup, not to bat because his hand was broken, it refuses to let the team down because he knows he's the captain of the side, goes out and scores 180 or a massive 100 in a game that he's not supposed to play. That takes fight. That takes character. We all talk about Graham Smith when he walked out in Australia with a broken hand. So it's, it's mentality that not every player is going to do that. Dean Alga, he should have retired it, I feel. But he went out and he showed an attitude to go and bat and go and play anyway. Because we need those type of guys to be able to play that way. You don't want to just play a defensive brand just because of the sake of it or just go out there and attack stupidly like that's not the point of this this is supposed to i feel that we're not picking players that that complement each other necessarily or that can play a certain or fit into a certain brand of, of cricket that we want to play and um, we're rather trying to change people to play in that particular brand which i think is impossible uh, it's impossible to do i mean if, in any sport that's that's you know, asking you playing with fire Anybody else want to add to that? Yeah, I can go. Um, yeah, absolutely. So I think we need to get the right people on the bus. There's a book 
for Good to Great by an author by the name of Jim Collins. And he always talks about getting the right people on a bus. It's in an in an organizational framework sort of context. But effectively, what we're talking about here is like a cultural shift as well, to get the guys that sort of complement each other, to get them to work as a cohesive unit. Because right now, I think what we all are pretty much saying the same thing is that the top six as it stands right now is a very uh, disjoint adventure, a very disjointed enterprise in the manner of speaking. Um, I think the only guys that are really uh, sort of have some level of cohesion is obviously Markram and Elga. Um, other than that, um, everybody's just doing their own thing, having a bit of a laugh on the field. And, and you know, I mean, I, I, you saw Quentin and Faf, they're having like a lekker laugh, you know, like a care. You know, let's, let's just light a, a braai fire later and, you know, throw some sausages on the, on the braai. <laughs> You know, I mean, this is not a club game, guys. Yeah, I don't know. Obviously, everybody feels cuck about it. Uh, I'm sure everybody feels like really shy about it. Quinton the cock will be the first guy to admit that to you. But the truth is that you need to do a lot more if you want to improve your circumstances. You have to do a lot more if you certainly want to win in Raul Pindi. And I can guarantee you, if we play the way we did now in Raul Pindi, we'll get creamed. We're talking three days, not four days. Um, we, we're in big trouble here, boys. And right now, it's not about playing aggressive cricket; it's about making aggressive selections. I think we need to look at the entire squad uh, squadron and, and say to ourselves, uh, which sort of uh, uh, players start. That's my wife in the background. Hi, Mrs. Uh, Hi, Mrs. Reddy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she, she's not too happy about the cricket either. Um, yeah, which sort of players we need to consider as uh, as potential contenders for the role? I mean, I, I hate to see a guy, a gifted batsman like Kyle Verena, constantly carrying drinks. I'm sure you share the same frustration. I, I hate to see a guy like Keegan Peterson constantly carrying drinks, also having a laugh on the boundary. Uh, Saral Elvia, uh, Elvia is also sitting sitting around, you know. And it makes you wonder, you know, these guys are all hungry. They're waiting for their, their golden ticket, their golden opportunity. And... Uh, I can tell you now, if, if Elga is injured, that's going to be a huge cause for concern. Uh, because effectively, he's more than just a nuggety batsman. He is possibly a, a, a top performer right now. He's the main guy. He's the go-to guy. Uh, he's probably the best performer in the subcontinent, if you think about it. He did well in India. He did well now in Pakistan. And more than likely, he'll, he, if, he, if he's cleared, he'll score runs in Raul Pindi. It's everybody else that's the issue. Uh, other than Bakram, obviously, the other four. They need to come to the party. That uh, Actually, that includes Quinton the Cock as well. For once, he's under the, the spotlight for the wrong reasons. You know, uh, we, need to see to, we need to relook at this whole, our whole set of tactics. We need to be very careful about uh, how, we, how we approach Raul Pindi because I guarantee you we'll be back home on an early plane ride if, if we don't uh, sort our issues out. Yeah, and, and from my perspective also, I'm sorry just to add to that, is that when I say pick youngsters, I don't necessarily always mean just pick a youngster for the sake of picking a youngster either. It's not like I'm asking people that are in amazing form to be dropped for youngsters. It's not what I, that's not what I'm asking. I mean, Dean Alga's the only one in that that I feel that in our top six that, as you can say, has a has a definite spot in that batting lineup. I mean, I mean, I know, I mean, Quentin, yes. Okay, people are getting a bit overboard about Quinton because I mean he scored three fifties against England and he scored hundred and eleven in India not um, not so long ago. But my whole thing was, yeah, I was one of the guys that said Quinny needs to be put up the order, drop the gloves, have less responsibility and focus on his batting more. I was one of those people. I was one of those people that said that, but that might not be the right thing. That might be the right thing. I'm looking at Quinton, Quinton's age right now. He's at the perfect time peak on his career, can bat for another five, six years and dominate for South Africa because that's how talented he is. So either build a team around him, Rabada um, and, and Aiden, and say, okay, guys, we're going to build a core. This is our core. We're going to build that spine. Out of that spine, we're going to build a team around him and find the perfect blend. Or say, no, we're going to pick the best players that we can find in domestic cricket and we want to win. So then in those positions that we're lacking, pick the best players then. That the guys that are performing consistently at domestic level um don't pick guys that you think can play the style of that you think are going to be the best like there's certain things like that that i'm but if you're about where where you look at guys that i performed over the last three seasons that i put up their hand you want to give people that are, have performed at domestic level an opportunity then give them an opportunity to play in the most 
difficult conditions. I think a guy like Keegan, we also need to look at him. He's batted in Bloemfontein and batted well and switched conditions and batted well too in, for the night. So that shows an ability to be able to adapt to conditions. We know a lot of people are talking about Reina Fantona only batting in Bloemfontein and only scoring runs there. Um, you look at a lot of the guys that can only bat at their home grounds and they struggle everywhere else. So those are things that, that we all need to look at. It's not just about the stats as well. It's also about how people adapt to certain situations. Um, Sipa, I think you wanted to say something? I'm not necess- I think I already said my part, but I, I do want to say something about selection um, and, and just put this question to you guys. In terms of moving forward, I want to ask how. So are we just going to hoy in the, the, the inexperienced players and be like, okay, here we go, and then just shuffle them around according to form? So, for example, um, are we going to have Aiden Markram with maybe like Kyle Verena? I'm not saying he's going to open, but let's just hypothetically say that. With Kyle Verena just waiting right under him and then as soon as Aiden Markham has just a bit of a dip that's Carl Verena's opportunity he comes in and then you sort of build a sort of squad depth in a way but but at the same time it's, it's a bit difficult to do that because of the lack of tests so the question is how would you go about that where do you find the balance between um not just flushing out ex- like experience like Faf Duplicy just hoying him out being like okay you've served your country thank you goodbye where do we find that balance you know mm. that's true so you want the guys to be able to bat with him so you look at a guy like so so if you look at the top run scorers for the last five years i mean in, in domestic cricket give them the chances so like i'm at the moment i think that you you have your experience guys but you i think being the youngster in at number six now we're obviously putting temp at number six and that's where he's batting um but if you push everybody up Right, so you have Aiden, you have Dean, you have Faf, you have Rassi. Um, Rassi's a newbie still; he's still inexperienced in Test cricket. So we, we also, he's also getting the opportunity now to express himself in place. I mean, if he didn't go to Pakistan, he would have never got an experience of how to play on that pitch. He's going to take that with him for the rest of his life. He's going to learn from that experience. Aiden's going to take this into his game for the rest of his life. He, he, you could see there was an improvement from India. He's changed everything about the way he played. I've never seen Aiden leave so many balls in my life. I never even saw a pad a ball that was <laughs> before in my life. So you could see that it's helped him and taught him something, something that he wouldn't have learned in domestic cricket. The only way that we're going to teach these guys how to play in these conditions is by them playing. Grant Rudolfson, for example. I mean, the, the guy has the ability. Marcus Ackerman has the ability. There's a lot of youngsters in this country that can maybe get an opportunity to play in these conditions against Pakistan in the conditions for the first time, I think it would have been like, are you waste? I feel it's a wasted opportunity. If you're not going to 100% guarantee that our team is at its best and that are going to beat Pakistan, then what are you doing? That's my point. Um, let's just wrap it up, guys, because the really Redicom is going into an hour. Um, we can start with Lubu Balo, then go to um, Cricket Connoisseur Aditya, and then we can end off with Sepp. Um, for me, I feel we we missed we missed an opportunity a long time ago. Um, with our SAA side, there was a time where you'd look at the average age for the SAA side, and you'd find it was around 33, 32. And I used to complain a lot about that. That's mm. where the problem um, started. Mm. Remember, at SAA, you get to face um, some international bowlers. Sometimes you even get to face guys who. Who are, who are starters in their national team. I think that's where we messed it up. And another thing, I think I've said this before, um, we failed to introduce youngsters when we were still at the top. And now we are playing catch up. So it's not easy to bring in a youngster and say, we're going to groom you at six. Because you're grooming him at six. Number three is not scoring runs. Number four is not scoring runs. Number five is also struggling for runs. So it's no use. If you bring in a youngster, if KP plays, he needs to pay three. There's no other way. We cannot hide him anywhere because the team needs a number three in the first place. So, but for me, the last thing I want to say is I want to say I really want to see a change in approach. I want to see a change in game plan. I want to see us play positive cricket. I know a lot of people on on Twitter think I'm saying I want to see Oaks play big shots. No. Strike rotation. Strike rotation. Like I've, I've, I've I've been making this example for the past three weeks. If you're planning to face 
100 balls, there's no guarantees that you're going to go beyond 100 balls. Because in any format of cricket, there's that one ball that has your name on it. And if you're lucky enough that you face 100 balls, you need to make the most of it. If, let's say, you get about 20 runs from 100 balls, and then there were like 10 bad balls, the least you can do is try and score minimum runs off the bad balls. So that's minimum runs is a single run. So if it's a full toss, you play it on the ground for one. Long hop, playing it on the ground for one. That's the least you can do, just to rotate strike. Because if you're going to say, no, I'm going to score 20 in the first 100 balls, then after the 100 balls, I'm going to start trying and pushing. You, you, there's no guarantees. The 101 ball, the 101st ball could be the one with your name on it. And if you think the guy coming after you is going to come in, he's not in the same form as you. He hasn't been betting as long as you've been betting in the pitch. So I want batsmen to take responsibility. Don't say, no, if I take time out of the match, the other batsmen are coming. There's no guarantees that they're going to score runs. A collapse can happen any day. Oaks need to take responsibility. I really want to see um, a change in approach. I really want to see us play. I'm tired of being known as fighters. In World Cups, it's the same thing. Oh, no, the pro tiers fought. I'm tired of fighting. We need to start win winning matches now. Mm. Yeah, and Luba Barlow, to be honest, that last little piece that you just mentioned there about responsibility, definitely agree with that. That's something that I'm also looking for from South Africa. Also, with regards to Pakistan as well, I know we haven't really talked about Pakistan, but of course, I think they'll want to force home their advantage as well, heading into what is basically a seam as paradise in Rawalpindi. And with regards to the, the surface in Rawalpindi, I don't think it's going to be the exact same as Karachi. It is absolutely notorious for offering a bit more for seamers. So you're going to see the likes of Norkia, Rabada really coming into it. And someone who I'm just thinking that South Africa may have to look out for if we're looking ahead is Harris Ralph, potentially. I think that could be a very, very interesting selection from Pakistan. I think he's only played about three or four first-class games. But that is another X factor that these Proteus batsmen are going to have to face and come up against. So with regards to the next game, looking forward, I'm not saying that we should be ridiculously optimistic. I'm not saying that South Africa is shooing to win on that surface, but it's definitely a lot more to the Proteus style of play. It's a lot more seam conducive. It's not going to turn as much. If you look at the averages, for example, from seam compared to spin, it's massive. It's absolutely massive. Fast, lightning quick, express pace bowlers, the likes of Nokia Rabada, Ralph, Shaheen Shafrida, for example, will absolutely feast on this surface. And that also allows for the likes of Markram, the likes of Elgar, for example, to play their natural game as well. So let's not go into it with loads of confidence. I know everyone's a bit low because you've just come off the back of a pretty, well, it was a thrashing, wasn't it? A seven wicket loss. But with that being said, there's still little positives to take away. You have to keep that grain of optimism, okay? Heading into that next match, it's going to be a lot more suited to the Proteas themselves. So let's just go into that. Let's put this game behind us and let's focus in on that second test match in Pindi. Aditya. I think Kevin Peterson's famous adage cricket as a team game played by 11 individuals is incredibly important to the Proteus right now because what we've seen is that the scene there's is that there's this collective there's this collective fear or this collective uh, there's this collective fear of the unknown that 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 uh, that spin might might present challenges that spin might present and um somewhere i think at an individual level as Aaron had, had mentioned a couple of shows ago that it's up to the individual now to decide how they want to proceed and form their own game plan it worked with rassi and aiden aiden said in his press conference and um, it's far is experienced he can help some of the younger players with that as well and uh, it's it's important that now you know, as an individual, you have you reflect on your strengths and weaknesses, and you know what your scoring options are. You know when it's time to drop anchor, and you just learn to read the game better. I think no one can teach you how to read the game. You've got to formulate your own assessment and play accordingly. And uh, I think that's where South Africa need to go from here. With that said, yes, more familiar conditions in Rawalpindi, and uh, they should go with um, the degree of confidence that they came out with after the Sri Lanka series. So. All the best to both teams. 
And uh, for my final thoughts, I just want to answer uh, the cricket connoisseur's question. What what do we expect from this team as, as South African fans? And for me, I just want constant improvement. Uh, I know that may be a lot to ask, but basically, if you see something isn't working, I want people to think about how to change that. Uh, what we saw with, with playing the spin today, no one seemed to have a plan. Every, and, and playing on the back foot today, oh my goodness, we constantly kept doing it when Aiden and Rossi showed us, look, bro, step forward. You know, don't be afraid, step forward. Don't hold the bat too tight. Don't force at the ball. But Quinton de Kock forced at the ball. KG Rabada, what shot was that? I mean, we needed you to stay in and you're just playing a booming drive. No, bro, come on. There's no, there's no BMT. There's no focus. So for me, gents, let's just focus on how we're going to improve. Answer the tough questions. Don't say, oh, you know, if I had an answer to it, then I would tell you. Be there thinking about that thing and, and tell us what you're thinking. You know, that's all I want to see, honestly. Yeah, and that's all we want to see is an improvement. I think that the Sri Lanka series kind of um, papered over the cracks for South Africa, actually, a lot, because a lot of the players are that their main players were not, from a bowling perspective, our batsmen kind of, I think it was almost inflated um, in a way, because a lot of their top bowlers, like um, Lakmal, for example, who's an excellent flip and fast bowler, um, and there's so many guys that they, they, they that, that we never got to bat against that were injured in the team and they were going through so much trouble, Sri Lanka and themselves. Um, so I think that the best test for South Africa is actually this particular series. If we're going to play against a full Pakistan team on those wickets, then we'll see how our batsmen can face. And if they fail in this particular series, what are we going to do for Australia? Are we going to give them another chance? Or are we going to say, guys, look here, we may we gave those guys an opportunity. Let's press the reset button. Let's look forward. Let's try and I don't know um, reset and try to find ways to um, to fill in the gaps. We just want to hear a proper plan. And yes, we're trying to win every game. That's not a plan that we want to hear. Um, so thanks a lot, everybody, for tuning in. Thanks a lot for all the comments in the comment section. I know you guys don't always agree with everything that I say either. Um, I'm trying to, my best to also give you guys different views um, so that we can get the conversation going as well. And I'm trying to pull some comments from the comment section as well to help you guys also get into the discussion. But thanks a lot for tuning in. Um, we hope you enjoyed the show. Um, don't forget to obviously like, comment, share, subscribe, and click that notification bell for all future videos, of course. Um, we need your shares and we need your likes because that's going to get us into other recommended feeds. Um, subscribe to the magazine. It's a digital magazine. It's free. The link is on the screen and in the description. It's for you guys to be able to download right away. All you need is to put in your email address. If you want the updates about the series, you can go to cricketfanaticsmag.com. That's where you get all your updates on everything in South African cricket that we can find because obviously we primarily focus on South African cricket. If you guys have a business and you're a small business, whether you're a big business and you're looking to make sales online and you're struggling during this period, so Cricket Fanatics Magazine can help you. All you have to do is click on the free tutorial on this channel and click on the link in the description as well. We will help you guys make sales online even if your business is offline. So just get in contact even if you want to promote your brand with Cricket Fanatics Magazine. We opened up the whole red card and everything for you guys to help. Even if you're a small company, don't have a big budget. Um, as well, we have opened up our Patreon as well, so you can become a patron and join this journey today. The links are in the description too. Thank you a lot, Ricky Connoisseur. Thank you a lot, Aditya. Thank you a lot, Shepo. Thank you, Mpo. Thank you, Lubabalu. Thank you, everybody that can join the stream. Thank you, Ravi, for always coming on as well. And we'll see you guys very, very soon. Take care, everyone.